Sarah Donchi, imagine living in a neighborhood that looks like this, filled with burned out abandoned cars, a lot of them stolen, left behind to just fall apart. That is exactly what is happening in parts of Oakland, and a lot of people want to do something about it. Some, though, are afraid of retaliation just for trying to clean up their neighborhoods. Juliet Goodrich is here with us tonight. She talked to a man who was so upset, he said, I am going to fix this myself. Absolutely. Retaliation. Remember, just think of that. Now, we did visit parts of Oakland that looked like a literal junkyard. We walked up and down. This is along the railroad area here. Now, Oakland tells me that they just started a new program to clean up the mess, but this is going to take some time. Is getting worse by the day. I mean, you can talk to some of the neighbors. We're here on um, Eads and Carey Street, and this is just one section. You see, look at this. Community advocate Ken Houston walks us through parts of Oakland and says this is just one example of the abandoned cars and illegal dumping he sees on a daily basis. He says it's on the rise. Right here, this is a newer car. Look at that Z71, that's new, right? You have this over here. These are you, these these cars have not been here, but let me take you down here. These cars that are burned up, that's been here for years. He says he's also very much aware of another issue: neighbors so the, the, who walk the, in fear. And here's a problem: the neighbors are hostage in their own homes because they're scared to report it because of retaliation. I mean, this young lady down here said a person said, "If you report me." I'm going to burn down your house with your kids in it. Don't get mad at me because I ranged it twice. <laughs> Neighbors like Gabby Napoli, who have lived here for years and have dealt with the blight right in her own front yard. It's crazy. It's really sad. Sad because even as she says she tries to secure her home, she's afraid of cars being set on, be fire. set on fire mm. at night. Um, there's been quite a few times that it happens at night and my house will shake and we'll think it's an earthquake and now it's another vehicle on fire. And I will have to come out here, my husband, and water down the house, the yard. So what happens is sometimes people will start living in them, like somebody over here. So who's responsible for cleaning this up? Union Pacific. The railroad? The railroad. Union Pacific Railroad. This is their responsibility. This is this is the railroad's responsibility. On the other side is um, Alameda County, and then the street side is the city. So how do you all work together if everyone's in charge of different locations? That's what we've been trying to do for years. When we bought the house, this was just mountains of trash. From here all the way to where that fan is. It gets depressing because if you lived in this neighborhood, wouldn't you be embarrassed for your friends or family to come by? Wouldn't you be embarrassed? I would be. So let's talk about solutions. The city admits it is backlogged. They can't tow a vehicle if someone's living in it, but they certainly can come and tow a vehicle that has been stolen and stripped and left on the street. Well, they took all four tires. Chanel Smith is with the city's if new vehicle inside, enforcement they, unit. You can see where they actually punched the ignition stole all of that out and that's how they were able to take the car. The city launched the vehicle enforcement unit two months ago. Technicians like Chanel assigned to a specific area to focus on stolen and abandoned vehicles and tow them out. And they had Taco Bell. And they had Taco Bell while they were doing two stolen this morning at least. Let's see how many others. Oftentimes, it's neighbors reporting stolen or abandoned vehicles. So this unit handles those calls, and OPD now focuses solely on public safety. There are cases where we actually see people dumping cars and try to reach OPD immediately, and hopefully that'll take one car robber off the street. But basically, we're just here for recovery. I feel if I came back three or four days later, there, it would be someone living in And there. then you can't take it. Then I can't take it because now it's become someone's home. Share a couple of things. And for community members no like Ken Houston, respect. it no. is a step That's why we have in the right respect. direction. So you get the idea. Now, you might be wondering about the owners of these stolen cars. Look at this, Sarah. I mean, the catalytic converter taken out, battery taken out. This is trashed. It can't be used. They did contact the owner. They'll have to pick it up at the junkyard, call the insurance, yada, yada. You get the idea.
Wow. So I guess in a situation like this, mm -hmm. we have all these different people right. working together. How do you know who to call? Yeah. So there's so many different agencies. The city of Oakland says this is really simple. Call 311. They'll funnel it to the right agency. They're all working together. We're going to follow up and make sure that they are. Incredible story. Thank you so much.